Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, episode 306. Let's build a robot, part two. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java. Where we pick up from last time, Michael and I are discussing the style of robot to build. Uh, If you've not checked out the first part, go back to episode 305. And now, for the exciting conclusion of Let's Build a Robot. Yes. And and if you're a giant metal robot walking around, you're going to get... Well, of course, but what, that's why I was thinking about storage, because if we're talking about a small, um, if we're talking small and where it grabs a seed and then the te- seed teleports, now we can talk about a robot that is significantly smaller, like maybe the size of a bird. Mm-hmm. You know, we can talk about something that's more like maybe the size of a squirrel. Mm-hmm. Now it would take time to cover ground, but it'd be easier to hide. Possibly. Unless you're found. I mean, I mean, and still, once again, unless you're an automaton that looks like a bird, you know what I'm saying? Right. If you're a giant metal bird, if you get seen, you, you know, you're going to try and get away, but, and you might get away. Yeah. But the thing is, it's the best place to hide is in plain sight. I no, I totally agree with your, 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 your train of logic. I think that we're catching ourselves in a catch 22 here though, because mm-hmm. now we're talking about something a lot more advanced than what I was thinking thinking um, but if you want to get to the question of what is human when does human begin i'm gonna i'm gonna switch my my approach i'm gonna have to because i was thinking more like you know some sort of clockwork thing with magical base that you know oh well, i don't think internally you're like a human i think externally you appear uh, human. no i get that but if you're talking about something that is so um in, intellectually advanced that it under that it may, may have thought and belief about a topic. Mm -hmm. It understands that it can air quotes die if Mm -hmm. it overextends itself trying Mm -hmm. to collect seeds. And it understands that it has to appear human. Mm -hmm. Like that's a lot of high end thinking. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just wasn't, I I wasn't initially headed that way. I was thinking of like a little gatherer bot. Yeah. So I got to change my, my approach. Um, Okay. So it, so we can, say he or she because Mm -hmm. it is going to have to appear at least to Mm -hmm. be a gender to go through this world um and you make a lot of what is knowing that you have a limit Mm -hmm. and not crossing it you don't necessarily need high-end thought processing for Mm -hmm. but for someone on the outside looking in you Mm -hmm. must have high level (laughs) you know what i'm saying so it's it's really and that's where the questions all draw into right um so who, uh, what race in your world, and I'm sure the asker, I would know this, mm-hmm. what race in your world has the safest um, possibility of getting around without human, human is the safest race to be? Mm-hmm. Yep. So so it looks human as opposed to yes. like Elvin or... It, and it does not look asker. You, you would be chosen for the area you're heading towards. Oh, that's true because they're making a, a number of these things. So some of them would look one way and some of them might look another. Yeah. And you might end up somewhere else, <laughs> but where you're is, starting to, is that, is their form is, malleable as far as they can plan? Hmm? Is their form self malleable? What does that mean? That means they can alter the way they look. Um, hmm. now I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure one of their mages could do it. I'm asking if they can do their it on their could own. Do it? And it's not impossible to do. I think maybe you could do subtle changes, Mm -hmm. like surface-wise. Yeah. Like, you know, you could maybe uh, change, like, the hair color. Um, Possibly skin tone. Possibly skin tone. Um, Yeah, I'd say hair color and skin tone. Okay. Maybe even eye color. To to blend in a little. facial structurally. Yeah. um, Because that's a flesh thing. Yeah. This you're not, time to, you're not to extending, you're not extending ears and, and, uh, adding tusks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so let's get a little more granular. 
Mm-hmm. Are we talking about a specific bot? Like, for instance, are we going to talk about one, create one that becomes self-aware? Like, do we want to start part of this? Yeah. Or, or thinks he's self-aware. <laughs> or <laughs> thinks know? he's self-aware. Yeah. I mean, because well, that's the case twenty two. If you think you should, if you think you're self aware, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah, it's not a great question. Yeah. I mean, aren't you? But that's the catch thing too, right? How is that a catch though? How if you if you're like, I think therefore I am. You know, you are. So if I had a computer tell you I'm self aware, and I program a computer to believe it's self aware, so if you quiz it from any direction it can answer the question and, well and, is it a high enough intelligence that it can be or is it just parroting what you're, you've programmed it to do y- yeah that's the problem right that's 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 the whole crux of the mind screw of the story right mm-hmm. is it believes it is but it would have doubts too because ultimately it's doing what it's supposed to hmm. and if it stops doing what it's supposed to was it supposed to do that so return? there's turn. I mean, so it's like at a surface level, obviously I have to be this smart. How can I be trick humans for so long to think I'm a human? If I'm not as good at being a human as a human or better. Hmm. Um, but I'm also doing the job I'm supposed to be doing. Or am I, if I stop, am I supposed to stop? But those are kind of the in game kind of questions you can kind of start getting into. Hmm. Um, uh, with it, you know, it's, it's like sort of like high end philosophical, like, am I real? Like me right now, do I exist? It's the same mm. question. I believe I exist. So obviously I do. And if I don't, it doesn't really matter. Cause I believe I do. Um, I guess, but yeah, you know, it's an existential kind of question. Oh yeah. No, no, no doubt. I think, um, what we should do for like the next episode, um, <clears throat> uh, following up on this, whether or not that's the follow, whether or not that is the very next episode or the next episode, we just choose to have this discussion. We should watch. Um, I've already seen it. I would happily watch it again. I know my wife wants to see it because I don't think she saw it. Uh, a movie called uh, Ex Mahina. I don't know if Ex- you've seen this. I've not seen that. It's been in my queue for a it's been really in your queue for a while. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure it's still on Netflix. It is. Excellent. You should watch it. You should also, if it's still on Netflix, watch a movie called um, mm-hmm. Auto Amada with, uh, with um, Benicio Del Toro. No, not Benicio Del Toro. Um, uh, Desperado. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Antonio Banderas. Antonio Banderas. So those two movies are both very Blade Runner. Um, mm-hmm. and Speaking they, of which, yeah. Yeah, the exactly. book more so than the movie, but the first uh, movie would be good. I, you know what? I liked the second movie. I did like it. Okay, it's not. I'm, 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 I'm not saying that people shouldn't like it. Yeah, it's not as good. It's not the same. I mean, it really. It was too long. They needed, there was a lot that could have been cut out of it. It was too long. It was really creepy. Um, you know, I. Th- there were certain lines that pushed up against for me. Mm. It was like one of those I, I was not offended by, but I, I thought about being offended by, and I'm not the type of person to get offended at movies. Right. So what part were you possibly getting offended by? Uh, really, it was the way they treated women in there. Um, all the women were essentially disposable. The main female from the first movie just kind of walked in and got shot in the head. And Spoilers. And nothing. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I, it just it, it was like all all everything female was completely a disposable object in the in the movie, in my opinion. And I I'm don't go- get worked up over stuff like that. I'm gonna have to rewatch it with that. I mean, because there were some things in it that I thought were done really well, but I, I don't. Yeah, and and it was see this is movie. this is one of the things there that were some I'm strong elements in the movie that were good, but then there were things that really it, it just kind of stopped me from wanting to get too immersed in it. Hmm. So um, it, it just the way it caught me. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the things that makes me a bad viewer sometimes because there's sometimes there's really over the he- over the top stuff that like hits you in the head that I miss. Yeah, so I, and we all do. It just depends on the movie, the date and time you see it too. You know, yeah. If you'd watch it, just, it a different day, it might have hit you in a different way. I know. It's just I mean, I'm always bothered by my blind spots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, but you're human. We all have them, and I could be wrong too. I could have just had a strange, overly sensitive moment. I don't know. I never mm. heard a big outcry about the movie. Maybe it was yeah. just me, but I don't, I don't know. It just it caught me in a way where, you know, and I, I'm not 
opposed to bad things happening to female characters. It, it, it should happen because it mm-hmm. does. <laughs> You know, yeah, but just but the way it I mean, in there, it just, but let me let me l- let me qualify your statement by yeah. saying you don't mind bad things happening to characters, regar- yeah. regardless of gender and fictionally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's make, let's that, make clear. that very clear because I don't I don't yeah. think they, I, I, don't I just like want to make sure people don't humans uh, or non female <laughs> or male or or really non humans either. I I I'm or or whatever gender they subscribe to because. These days, I'm not quite a pacifist in my, yeah. at this part of my life, but I'm as close as you can be without being probably. Mm. Um, so, uh, but yeah, but, I'm not uh, as I'm not as passive as I'd like to be. I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm much more so, especially than I was when I was a soldier. And part of me as a soldier, I'm a functional pacifist, where it's like I, I get it. Sometimes you just can't, but mm, yeah, <laughs> uh, there are bad people in the world, but there are, unfortunately. And so like, like, you know, me going, I'm, I'm, I'm going to DC in a week and I, I'm, I'm already prepping my mindset for uh, potential city conflict. And odds are, I'm not going to have to deal with anything. Especially because, like where you're going to be in DC. Because of where be I'm going to you know, I'm, I'm, I will yeah. probably be literally in the hotel the entire time. I don't know if we'll step. We might step out the hotel to go get something to eat. I don't know. But um, we might literally be in one building the entire time. And if that's the case, I don't have to because worry about being jacked you're up. You're going to a con street. down there or something. I'm, like going, to, sure. I'm going to Commander Fe- or Command Fest, which is a... Um, it's a Magic the Gathering um, festival, and I've never been to something like this before, except when I used to do states uh, state level tournaments here in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I I don't know how big it's going to be, but you know, my brother and I um, have you thought some, it would be fun. <laughs> well, well, I'm getting back to like the perspective of the city being in a city is that we're both going to be traveling with some really expensive cards, yeah. so I don't want to get my stuff taken, you know, like yeah, especially if you're staying in a hotel where a whole bunch of people with those cards are staying in the room who understand the value and you, you're never going to see them again. You, you know or, what I mean? Or, or the thieves aren't even in the tournament if they know about it and know the value of it. Exactly. You, you know, you created, like, uh, yeah, exactly. So like, I'm like, okay, security wise, like what do I need to have on me? Mm-hmm. You know, and I have certain, you know, self defense products that I carry with me. Ninja if, I, chickens. if if I'm traveling, ninja chickens. I have fourteen. He will have ninja chickens. Ninja chickens. His room. Yeah, Don't they be will be. People. They'll be in my coat pocket. Um. So, <laughs> me and my fourteen ninja chickens. <laughs> I love that you just came up with that. Hmm. <laughs> um. So, like to give you an idea that I, it's totally cool, but my um my nephew, uh, two, both my nephews are going as well. And one of my nephews asked my brother if he could p- play a particular deck of my brother's. I will not get specific which one it is. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, can I play this deck at in DC? And my brother's like, ah, it depends on the tables. It depends on like how things are set up. He's like, because I, it's not that I don't trust you, but the that deck, people that, around you, I, I might not trust. Well, well, here's the thing: that deck is worth like five thousand dollars. Oh wow! So he's like, you know, it there's wouldn't be older, a, it, more it, rare cards it, in that. Deck. There's a lot of older, more rare cards in it. So the 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 the, the thing is, it's not a, it's not a, like he would expect somebody to grab the entire stack of cards and run away. But it would take you know Only just a second really for, yeah. exactly it would take just a second for him to turn his head and somebody just gently mm-hmm. slide one card away and that would be a $600 a lot loss. of people it's not too hard to slide a hand lots of people exactly are pretty good. exactly Especially so with cards. all right so strengths and weaknesses of the same. <clears throat> you got to think here one strengths is it appears human it's probably stronger than human uh, it's probably smarter than human uh, well, it's probably I mean, more agile than human. Uh, well, I was going to just immediately go to intelligence. I mean, it needs to be able to identify safe, edible vegetation yeah. that it's never seen before all over the planet. Yeah, yeah. No, you have to be more intelligent. You have to be stronger because they're not sure in all the environments. More right. agile because they're not sure on all the environments that you're going to be into. Um, uh, more flexible. More health because part of your health you can use to create uh, – Temporary partners. So there's a, a, a disposable amount of health that you have. Uh, in theory, you could choose to use it all, uh, but uh, they assume that you could use no more than half when they built you. Um, uh, but that's also a weakness, right? Because in theory, you could just be like, ah, F it, I'm going to be a spider robot. 
Um, I want to be a spider robot. Ha ha, bitches. I'm um, gonna make I'm gonna make twenty spider robots and divide myself, gather all these seeds, and then one of the weaknesses too is to have this level of intelligence. You have to have a mind, you know, like in, in cognitive, like like theory is like we have system one and system two mind. We have a system one mind, which I believe is the mind that is all about uh, the routines that are built into us, and we have a system two mind that stresses and overthinks everything. And, but that's where the big picture stuff happens at. And um, so you need both of those. The problem is there are lots of mistakes that can be made in a system to mind. Michael needs both of those minds to do what he does, or he thinks he does. Well, yeah, but also I see, I was also going to say like uh, loneliness, like it might of not course. get, it might not get lonely, but if we're going to have artificial intelligence that is so advanced, it might not be uh, avoidable. And uh, it's not going to be like necessarily like no humans are at your level of intelligence or, but it'll be up to you. Like when you build it out to go, does this thing consider itself superior to humans? Does it only consider the other robots worthy? Uh, or maybe the ancestors that, that created them might be worthy, but you can't talk to them for 500 years. Hmm. Um, and you're left with these idiot morons and <laughs> like you get out into like some of these like, like real tribal places far away and they might not have any levels of civilization. Um, so, um, they're going to seem very backward to what you saw right before the destruction they caused. So you kind of have this Roman empire, like uh romantic thing where it was great one time, the, the Gothic this is what they call Gothic uh, era in, in the Renaissance, right? Where, but the b- barbarians destroyed civilization back then, and this is what we're left with. So they thought France and Germany and England were all just horrific places, nothing like the golden age of Rome and Greece, uh, which uh, you couldn't really argue that because the Romans and Greeks were pretty horrible people uh, as well. But, um, but from a romantic standpoint, it worked from a Gothic standpoint, it worked, you know, the Goths destroyed the Roman empire and what they considered civilization. And, you know, you forget about the bad stuff. It's like when you have that girlfriend that was horrible and you move away, mm-hmm. you know, you forget about the bad things. You remember the good things you, you know, you, people have a tendency to idolize those good things, you know, and that's kind of a, a thing that could happen here, but it's like to you. And you didn't know them long because you were sort of rushed into production at the end. And their end could be a weakness too, that they didn't really plan for every eventuality. Um, They had to maybe give you, they couldn't quite build in the limitations they necessarily wanted to because they didn't have the time. (laughs) You know, when you have the barbarian hordes literally from every direction invading you, uh, time is of the essence. So, um, um, do we have a why as to why this one becomes singular? I assume it is the only one that becomes singular unless you want to do a know. whole bunch of them because it's like, you're out and you, you become singular. You know, there are other ones, you know, there aren't many, uh, you don't know their faces. Um, well, no, I'm saying from a, cr- from a creator standpoint, you and I right now, this mm-hmm. one, is it the only one that becomes, you know, self-aware? It thinks so. I really wish you'd answer the question. <laughs> that takes the fun out of it as a storyteller, right? So no, I'm not going to answer that. Well, yeah, but don't we need to know the answer? Uh, yes. Or I need to know the answer, but that could come into the story. I don't know. So. Okay. So. No story yet either. <laughs> fair enough. Okay. So do we want to talk personality at all? Uh, no, that's the character building thing. This is a robot building thing. All right. Fair enough. Um, so so these are st- the sticking ones. with sticking with strength, strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. We've mentioned mostly strengths. Mm-hmm. What are the weaknesses? Weaknesses are uh, at least this exterior is made of flesh, so it, it can't. It's not like a giant like 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 you know like spider bot. Uh, you know, it, it's not Terminator. It, it's you know it's oh, it's going to be harder to kill. Fantasy but, Terminator. Now yeah, we're but talking. That's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> so you can be killed. Uh, you have more <laughs> life than other things, but I mean, there are other races that are actually stronger, more durable than you are. Uh, you can feel pain because you have all those memory things. Pain's a mm. function of the mind. Um, as someone who suffers from chronic pain, I get this, right? Pain is the way your mind warns you that your body, your body is about to take damage. 
So it goes, ouch, and you stop because you are in pain. The damage doesn't cause the pain. It's your brain going, I'm about to be hurt really bad. Mm. And there's a great case study I learned in my pain university class um, where they were talking about this uh, construction worker. <laughs> I don't want to graduate from that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh? Uh, the VA wants you to go to pain you, buddy. Um, and uh, But what happened was this guy was a construction worker, uh, a carpenter, I believe. And he was at a work site, and he jumps off of like – one story of a building purposefully uh, constructing on, but it, I don't think it was full. But let's say it was like three, three feet up. He lands on an iron, uh, long nail. It pushes <laughs> up impales through the boot. And you see the image of the boot and it's, I don't know, like maybe a, an inch or two down and it just goes straight from the bottom through the uh, top of his boot. Oh my God. Like, and like he, a, like a, like, like a piece of rebar. Uh, no, it looked like a, a, a it almost like a train spike. It was it looked like a nail. Oh my god! It was like it was like nine inches long. And, it was a nine inch nail. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and the guy is screaming, and of they're like horrified. They're like trying to rush him back. They're they had to actually put him unconscious because they could not even mm. keep him strapped down. He was in so much pain. Yeah. They get back, um, and and they start to surgically remove the boot. Um, and they get to the end and they realize that the nail went up between his two toes. It didn't hit him at all. It did not actually penetrate his skin. It brushed up through his skin. So like it, I'm sure there was a little bit of bruising. Um, this guy never lived this down. Maybe never. Not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the doctor's. I mean, when they saw him come in, you saw that boot. It looked like it would have gone looked, square through the foot. Yeah. They, everyone believed this went through his foot, including the guy. And the problem was his brain believed it went through his foot. Mm -hmm. So his brain is his, doing the screen. His brain made the pain. Yeah. And, and the thing is, pain is real, but the pain is not a reaction to the damage. A pain is seeing what's happening and it's saying you're going over a level where you're getting hurt. So it's not the heat. And that's why like people who don't feel pain die young. And there are a group of people who are like that. And they always die young because you mean uh, people who have the genetic disorder where they, they physically yeah. cannot feel pain. They physically yeah. cannot feel pain. They die young because they overstimulate their body and they take damage and die. Yeah. Um, not purposefully, not purposefully. Yeah. Uh, but they just, they don't know that their hands on the fire. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, so, uh, your weaknesses are though, is like you're frail, like a person. So not super frail, but definitely if you're beaten up enough, you can be killed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's definitely a weakness. Uh, another thing is if, if wherever you're at, they, most everyone knows who the Eskari are. And are if you they ever figured out that you are connected to the Eskari? Right. Like it will be a, a movement to kill you. <laughs> Are you um, healable? Are you fixable? Are you self-fixing? Is there any part of you that regenerates or self-heals? I think. I think yes. I, 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 think I, I imagine it's, it's a very. I imagine it's a very very slow process to make it fair. Yeah, it's it's more like a human process, right? So, right at a surface level, it would look like you got punctured, and it looks like flesh is damaged. Internally, there's a, a skeletal core as fake. Um, mm -hmm. but there's like real tissue on there and it has to heal normally. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, but what if you, what if you actually, let's say you're walking on an uneven surface and you take a tumble and smash a leg on a rock and you break the uh, structure internally. I mean, is that just like, okay, well you're lost to time. Um, we're not going to set down a search and rescue party because your, your seeds have made it back and your seeds are what important. So you will just rust and become part of the environment. Uh, well, I, you know, I think worst case there's, you know, you, you probably know how to amputate yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, if there's something that you don't think could structure, I think it's kind of like humanish, right? Where like it can repair itself, but there might be a point where if it took really too much damage, mm -hmm. it might not be able to, or maybe let's say it gets severed mm -hmm. unless you find it to get it connected again, it definitely mm -hmm. won't heal. Um, and the one part isn't even getting electricity anymore. It will start to you know, decomposing mm -hmm. the internal part slower, but the flesh at the same rate as flesh. So, um, so, uh, I mean, there are limits. They're a little bit stronger than you would think, but, and you heal faster than people, but not 
super faster than people. Internally, you heal much faster than people. The tissue wise, you heal much slower or not slower, but it's like a little bit faster. Well, <clears throat> now if you got just, shot, you know, your internal structures would rebound like really fast compared to a human, but like the wound wouldn't look much better. You know? Well, here's the thing. If, if it's actual flesh or it rather, let's, mm -hmm. let's say um, if it is living tissue, yeah. then, you know, we can argue that it needs nutrient to, um, yeah. to re stuff. regenerate. Yeah. So does this thing need to eat or does it yeah. need to physically topically apply nutrients and have it the body absorb it? It can choose to eat. It could choose to eat people. It could, um, it could, I need to recover flesh. This is flesh. <laughs> this is flesh. Um, it, it, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're designed to, to Cannibal, digest cannibalizing robot. You need calories to maintain the structure. Not as many calories as a person, but if you for, go, for, for locomotion, you, you need it for locomotion and, and, and to make sure it doesn't rot off of you, you need nutrients. And if you overeat, you don't get fat. It will actually just excrete it. Oh, there's uh, a benefit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I wish that were true. I know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's how my body works. Yeah. Okay. That would be awesome. You're like, I've eaten three ice creams and my body has excreted all of the calories and sugar and the things that I don't need from it. I just needed a little bit of the calcium from the milk in the ice cream. That's all my body kept. Everything else is gone. So I'm saying skeletally you're bronze and then you have fleshy stuff on top of there. So you're very Terminator-esque in that regard. Very Terminator-esque in that point, but it's sort of a Bronze Age civilization, so I wanted it to be bronze. I think it's cool. Oh, no, I, I'm... I, I'm not arguing the metal. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking about, you know, flesh wrapped steels, fl yeah. flesh wrapped metal. And the magic know. is stored in the steel. So the steel to use the most important part, you can actually survive without the flesh. Um, oh like yeah, no, Terminator. but, but in, in, in the interest but of, of maintaining probably your cover horribly yes. moved around. Yeah. You know, and in theory you could change your physical appearance by, replacing your flesh in its entirety um Ugh. but the problem would be if you did that you, i mean how would you like you don't you don't have the knowledge to connect the things to change the the skin color and so you'd lose the ability to well not i mean so does that mean that there's there's a, a built-in system you figure there's a built-in system to maintenance the flesh mm -hmm. that you have yeah so arguably that system whether it's built into the flesh or built into the machine <laughs> could manage maintenance, arguably arguably manage slash maintenance other flesh so if you wanted other, to yes yeah so maybe you so could. Like if you ate if you had different flesh on you it would probably maintain it but like your ability to manipulate it you don't know if that would work i don't think that it would and especially arguing the big argument there is like okay well i've ruined the flesh that i was made with but i have this person i just killed and i'm going to wear him like a skin robe that would not survive. It shouldn't. Sur it shouldn't survive on you. And I don't want this robot to be, you know, a Hannibal Lecter. But you do know that you can do that. And the reason that you can do that is if, for some reason, you lose the flesh on you. Um, so what do you mean? You know you can, you can do that. You so, don't know so you how see, well it will maintain it. You you're pretty sure you couldn't manipulate it. Uh, but you actually don't know that. Okay. So. Okay. That, so that I, that sounds to me like something like you're going to have to determine for yourself later. Yeah, I probably already you, mentally know that, but yeah. yeah um, I, I, have, I have a plan. <laughs> um, so we're not going to get into any of the personality or why am I, am I real sort of questions. Because those are questions um, that you come to. Yep. So what other things do you want to cover here? Because we've covered a... A we lot covered of time. strengths and weaknesses, uh, primary materials. We covered that. We're not going to get into all of them, but just, you know, mm -hmm. essentially your flesh over bronze. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a magic shot in there. We won't, we won't tell people how that would be. That would change the rating of the show. Um, how does it function? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let that one slide. Magically. Um, is it charged and does it need to recharge? Two things with that. Well, I mean, you did say. It is charged. You did say eating. Your life force is your charge. You don't need to recharge except to feed the flesh. 
So you could choose, like, say, if you were like, for whatever reason, you could not physically eat, Mm -hmm. you would not die, but your flesh would rot away. Uh, So it would still be bad. Um, but, uh, it would be bad in a different way than to a human. Like your, so your the four would survive. So the flesh is dependent on nutrient and, and the machine. The machine is only dependent on the flesh as obfuscation. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then, you know, from there it would be a, a backstory a little bit, which we've kind of weaved in as we've gone. So I, I don't know, think we really need to go much more into that. Um, for here, for character building purposes, there would need to be a deeper mm-hmm. the idea is mm-hmm. he's a robot who was sent out across the wastes created by his masters, um, to retrieve foodstuffs and stuffs needed for the civilization. And part of that will be me thinking up stuff as we go along going, Oh shit, they should probably some of this too. So like his, he might remember things because I not thinking of them now, but it's largely food stuff. And so he has a skill set, uh, like super high end farmer, (laughs) like super scientist farmer level brain. Um, plus he has survival skills. He has, he has some weapon skills and stuff like that to defend himself. Does Um, he have bow set bow staff skills? He has a bow staff. Yeah. (laughs) And he will have a mall, uh, made of the most holy Oak, the the most holy of Oaks. The Holy Oak Mall, if you will. The Holy Oak Mall, that's correct. And that's for all <laughs> you people up in Holy Oak. Um, um, it, so my desires about the spider bot, I think, still fit in really well. We can have uh, the spider bot be one of the created bots that the larger bot uses as a seed. You might even seed. have one with you. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to he, talk he, to. Yeah. And as he advances, as it advances and becomes more uh, sentient, I'll say, um, it could totally be a case of, um, uh, well, this spider bot doesn't look like a thing and I want a friend, so I will make a bird Mm -hmm. and it'll look like a bird and it'll become a pet as opposed to just a tool. From the part you, you departed, you probably witnessed the destruction of everything. Um, you would have, uh, from a safe location, uh, you, you were maybe even sent out. No, you probably weren't sent before. Cause they would have been afraid that you would have like run into an army, a marauding army, and then they might've just killed you or taken you as a slave. So, um, so they probably wait after they did their huge, like essentially nuking of, you know, a fifth of the world surface, uh, of land, <laughs> of land, uh, to protect one city. And then you left from there and you, you start to question whether or not you're human at the point of which you, you, you start interacting with the farms at the first place you go to. That's where like you, you, you're between the interacting with people. That's where it starts to occur to you that I know I'm not made like them internally. Um, but at least I don't think I am. Maybe I am. Maybe I should experiment. No, I'm, that, that's up to you. But, um, you know, uh, let me go in and, um, you know, but that's not until you actually start actively doing your work on the outside. Uh, we'll say a year after the explosion, uh, do you start to go, you know what? I think just like as good as any of them, if not better, Mm -hmm. you know, that's where your sentience occurs to you. Is it going to get arrogant? That that, that's a way for you to run your character or not. Mm -hmm. So, so I'll, I'll I'll leave the fun stuff up to you. I'm sorry. Am I gonna am I gonna play this character? Is that what we're talking yeah, about now? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I did not think that at all. Well, you're saying this just only besides the uh, um, Groundhog Day. This is a little bit easier kind of story to run. So, oh, uh, okay, okay, all right. I can work. I can work on that. Okay. So now the world building task of the day, Michael. Ooh, let me guess. How about create a fantasy robot? So a if you're not fictional you're, fantasy robot, yes, no, 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 make a real one, magic and all. Hold on, the real world task: summon the power of the old gods <laughs> and manufacture your your uh, fictional. No, automaton. no, we do not endorse so summoning the powers of the old gods. We will not endorse that. No, no, no. Okay, no, no. so spread some cheer. It's the holiday season. How about go gather some seeds and plant them? That one's a good one. Maybe make a house plant. Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed style. It would not hurt to have a few more going around. Uh, Merry holidays. 
Merry holidays. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G A R D U L.com. Now strike while the myth was hot.